Hello everybody. Welcome back to Art and Outdoor Life here with John. So I'm using a 10 by 10 watercolor, 140 pound paper. It's not exactly a sketchbook. I have a lot of sketchbooks and they're basically pocket sketchbooks. Okay, so it, this is wet on wet. And uh, I'm doing this from my front room on my coffee table. And I thought, okay, well, I'll put in, I'll, I could have zoomed in only on the painting itself. But I thought it'd be okay to let you see the palette. Okay, I'm using the Ron Ranson palette. And... Uh, I'm not using the upper part of the palette, if you're looking at it. The upper part, the only part I'm using is the Payne's Gray that I mixed. And uh, right there, I mixed that with black and cerulean blue with a little bit of red. Okay, and so I'm, I'm forming uh, my little creek here. And I'm using a medium hake brush. Uh, this is flat. So, I mean, it, it's, it only has just a very little tilt, the paper does. So when I came in here and did this, um, I forgot to clip down my paper. <laughs> uh, I'm good at forgetting things sometimes. I just get ideas and I just say, okay, I want to. Hit record, and I do. But I think it, you know, by doing that, I'm more honest about my work, my paintings, okay? So on the lower left, uh, on the palette, is the darker green I mixed, and that's Prussian blue with uh, some lemon yellow. Um, it's not ultramarine blue. And on the bottom right is Prussian blue with a little bit more lemon yellow. So it's a lighter green, okay? And I'm only using a few colors here. It's the Payne's Gray here outlining the stream. And I did forget to bring in a scraper. Okay, which I really needed in this one. I didn't need, I mean, you don't need it, but I mean, it would have helped a lot. And you'll see why as you watch this. Um, there's some yellow ochre. And I'm basically just trying to get uh, some ground in there where the mountains come. Uh and then I was like, okay, I'm going to darken up these mountains. And I, I'm not using white here at all. I'm going to darken up parts of the mountains, the mountain range. And then it, when I finally got done, you know, darkening up this mountain here, I realized I didn't have a scraper. And I was like, uh-oh. So, you'll see how I fixed it um, and the changes I made in this video. I like being honest about everything. I mean, and that's one of the things about, in the very beginning I, I said, in my, I think it was my very first video on the channel, I said I was going to be on honest and up front, and I believe I have so far, you know. This is from imagination. Um, when you're working with little real estate, I'm talking about the paper. When you're looking, working on very small uh, pieces of paper, it, it's challenging. 
it's challenging because it it now you gotta kind of use your brushes differently. You've got to look at um, where you want your horizon line and everything else because you don't have a big sheet of paper. So with some yellow there, lemon yellow, I'm brightening up the background a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm basically trying to create uh, the field and, you know, the mountain range and as well as this little stream. So, with the yellow ochre, I'm doing what I did in the last video. I'm just kind of putting some across the edge. And um, it's easier to do it for me when it's dry brush. But this is wet on wet. And the other video I did, I only watered down the top part of the paper. And this one, I, I watered the whole paper. So here's some burnt umber here. I'm creating a tree. And there I'm just kind of putting some ground around it. Uh, put too much ground around it because, you know, there now it looks, uh, yeah. So uh, over here I'm doing another tree. I was going to do a, a thin tree. But then as I was painting, I was thinking, no. Maybe I want this tree to look more closer, up front. So I made it wider and I made it taller. Okay. And it does kind of mix in with the other colors, with the green and the blue there. So with some burnt umber here, I'm just kind of outlining this little stream. And um, I'm liking the way the water is for the stream because I haven't done nothing to it. Um, and in my mind, I was thinking, okay, I'm not using white for the mountaintop, right? Because I don't have white and I'm not using it. I didn't want to use white or I would have brought it in. So to give this tree on the left... Uh, a little bit of character, bark, or whatever. I tried to dry brush it and lift the paint, and it didn't work. And I didn't have a scraper, so I used my fingernail, which I don't think it came out that well, but that's fine. That's fine. At least there's something there, right? A little bit of texture there. And the whole time while I'm painting, I don't even have a clip on the end. I forgot to put a clip on the end of this pad I got. So anyways, so now I'm just kind of trying to put in some, with the lighter green, which ain't much lighter than uh, the dark green that I made. But I'm, I'm just trying to put in some grass shapes, uh, you know, just kind of putting it here and there. And, uh, you know, I'm enjoying this because, you know, it's my free time. And I was like, hmm, I just got the paper today, the 10 by 10. Normally I use a 9 by 12. And this is square. And I didn't want to bring out my pocket sketchbooks, okay? Because those are really small. Um, and I wanted you to see, like I said in the beginning of the video, you know, I wanted you to, to get a per perspective of, you know, what I'm doing when I'm dabbing into paint to grab colors. So I'm grabbing some very light 
yellow there. And that's basically to lighten up the grass because the mountains are dark. And, you know, I, I wanted the contrast between the different colors. Okay, so with this brush, I was like thinking I can grab some paint off of the mountain and give it, you know, take away some of that paint. So I dipped it in some water, loosened up some of that paint on the mountain to drag, try to drag off some of the paint because I wanted it to be lighter and kind of a, a snow, you know, like a, to put a snow effect in there. And it just wasn't working for me. This is one of those moments where, you know, you're on your feet and you got to, you know, I mean, that this right here would have been fine. I'm not a big fan of the grain of paper. Not all the time. In this case, I wasn't. And I was like, okay. So I'm just going along. And I was like, well, I need to, you know, at least shape this somewhat. A little bit more. And then I was like, okay. I can darken parts of this mountain because when you darken you add shades inside like the side that's not getting the sunlight it will it does look really good it really does and so I'm just kind of fooling around here thinking okay if I darken part of it it should bring out the light on the other side, right? The lighter side of the mountain. But it, it to me, it wasn't light enough. So then I started getting ideas in my mind. There I am trying to grab more paint off. So to grab paint, you, if you don't know, um, you dip your brush, a flat brush, in some water and then you put it on the paint and it loosens up the paint and then, uh, you know, you just kind of pull it off. So with the paper towel, I thought, okay, this will work, you know. But I wasn't liking the shapes. I mean, this is, I'm not used to 10 by 10 inch paper here. So then I was thinking, okay, I'm not going to make this, uh, this is not going to work for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this, uh, not, I'm, I'm going to change the mountain. I'm not going to make it, uh, you know, with snow on the top and, you know, real far away, um, so I started adding some greens and a little bit of paint's gray there, as you see. And I'm going to reshape and put different shades in this mountain. Yellow brightens up everything and yellow changes colors. Uh, blue, when you put yellow on blue, it it makes a very nice green. When you put yellow on red, it makes a very nice orange. Yellows are awesome. So now I'm like, okay. So now it's got a forest. You know, this is more of a forest mountain. And it was just too straight. The edges were too straight for my liking. And here I am, I'm just with, with the Prussian blue, I'm kind of uh, trying to put uh, impressions of trees. And I was like, you know what, I'll just put one right there and 
we're gonna we're gonna change just a little bit. You know, everything's on the fly. There's no reference photo for these. It's it's just very fun to do. They're fun. And so <coughs> excuse me, I'm still getting over my sickness here. So, um, you know, I'm lightening up parts of this mountain and and when I, you know, when you lighten up things, it also uh brings in shade too. So, if you want shade, you don't have to necessarily uh put anything dark there. You could put something light next to it and the shade it will create shade of its own. So I'm I'm just going back and forth here, trying to figure out. I'm not really trying to figure nothing out right now. I'm basically letting the paint take me to how I want that mountain to, to look. And, you know, and while that's drying, I'm kind of like, okay, I want some darker grass over here. Maybe a few bushes here and there. And just to kind of, uh, you know, you don't want everything one color. I mean, sometimes you do. Um, I didn't at, at this point. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just I'm, I'm trying to put a little bit of dark in there against the light colors. And I was like, you know what? I got too much yellow ochre over here. So... You know, put something behind it a little bit. You know, maybe that will help the yellow ochre stand out on a river bank, the uh, stream bank. And so just, you know, barely touching it. I know there it, it's very muddy there at the bottom of this tree here. Okay. And I know I know that when I was painting this. And I'm like, and as you're, you know, painting, here I bring out the fan brush. Fan brushes are great for any, uh, it don't matter how big the paper you're on, or canvas, or canvas board. Fan brushes do it all. They're always like the go-to for like, if there's a last resort. You always go to the fan brush. Uh, most of the time. Anyways, I know that looks, you know, very muddy at the bottom of the tree on the right. So, I'll get back to that. So, with some paints gray, I'm just dry brushing along the stream. And, you know, with these yellows here, you create, you know, distance. You create light, like if the sun was beaten down, lighter, uh, you know, and the light brings out, of course, it brings out the darker part of the earth. And all in the meanwhile, while you're doing this, it's very interesting. The whole time I'm doing this, the, the stream... It, it's having a big effect on the stream. So I'm signing my name here. And then I put in a few birds. I will be doing more of these small paintings. Uh, this is just something I did. If you like my videos and enjoy what I do, um, please hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And I want to wish you a good, peaceful day, morning, and evening, no matter where you are. And I hope that you great you get a good, great enjoyment out of this. And if you're painting along, I hope that, you know, I hope that it's helping you if you're new at this. And uh, keep painting and don't stop. Thank you. Sincerely yours, John.